This is Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast with your hosts, Brandon Spinner and Michael Burns. And welcome into Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. As always, I'm one of your co-hosts, Brandon Spinner, alongside Michael Burns. Mikey, how are you tonight, my man? Doing pretty good, Brand. Doing pretty good. I'm excited for what we're uh, drinking tonight, we're reviewing tonight, and uh, it's going to have me having a little bit of a harmonica. Some blues, baby. Some from Memphis. <laughs> I have no idea if that even came through on your microphone because I didn't hear it in my ear, but I saw you with the mouth. So you might be able to see him do it on YouTube. I don't know. We're going to edit it and see if the audio comes through. Uh, but Michael was playing the blues with harmonica because we're going with blue note. You can see it with my hat. Uh, we're going to go with something special here, not just a normal uh, blue note bottle but this was sent to us by the folks over at blue note this is a special reserve cask finish series uh so there's a lot to this uh, i'm gonna try to break it all down for us as we go through since i'm the only one who's got the information on it uh, and michael i've done some math for you so i can give you an estimated mash bill out of this puppy but okay. uh, i do want to shout out this was sent to us from blue note so thank you to blue note for sending this we are going to give it an open and honest uh, review, uh, whether that is on our barrels and barrels rating scale, which you can always find on our Instagram page. Uh, that ranges from top of the top hall of fame. All star is second in line. Uh, not necessarily a hall of famer, but everyday player is third. Uh, one of those everyday guys in your lineup. Then bench player is kind of that utility guy comes off the bench, maybe mixes things up every once in a while or DFA, which is the bottom of the charts. Get off my team. Uh, we don't want you on our shelf. Uh, we don't like you get out of here. Sounds a little harsh, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> we don't want you. Yeah, but no, it's but, true. But, no, uh, it, it's true. It, it's true. If if you're getting the DFA, we do not want that on our bar. But we haven't rated this yet. Uh, again, thank you to Blue Note. We're going to dive into that here in a second. Real quick, for housekeeping purposes, we are Barrels and Barrels, a bourbon and baseball podcast. This is going to be a bourbon review, uh, a whiskey review. We send some of those out. We do some just designated baseball talk. And also, we have combined episodes of both. And you can find us on Instagram. That is Barrels and Barrels Pod. Uh, go head on over there. We're just about to 1,000 followers at the time of this recording facebook we're starting to blow up uh, go check us out there same at handle that is barrels and barrels pod and that's also where you can find us on youtube that's youtube.com slash at barrels and barrels pod we're nearly 200 subscribers at this point as michael's playing the harmonica again and if you get us to 100 subscribers, you're just going to see us grow more and more. And we're also throwing out some cool shorts out there that you just can only see on YouTube, sometimes on Instagram Reels as well. So if you're listening to this via Spotify, Apple, or as well as Amazon, Stitcher, any one of those podcasting platforms, that's where you can find us. We'd love to hear your thoughts and your review, just like we're going to review this bourbon. Uh, again, that is Barrels and Barrels Pod on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, Twitter. We're blowing up. We're over 100 followers on Twitter. We were into the 50s the last time we recorded, so we've doubled that, basically. That is Barrels and Barrels. So go check us out there. So now we've done the housekeeping thing. I got a yes, question sir. for you. Is, is YouTube Shorts now the cool things where the kids are going? Is that the next, like, Reels I, section? I think that's, like, what YouTube's trying to do for Reels and TikTok where the kids are these days. Uh, but we put All out right. some cool shorts and we're going to continue to try to do some more exclusive content there as well. So head on over to our YouTube page for more of that exclusive content. So with that being said, without further ado, we are going to be trying this cask finish series, special reserve cask finish series from Blue Note. This comes in at a proof of 112.36 and it is dated as January 16th of 2023. So that is when it was put into this bottle and shipped out here. So this is a blend of seven different bourbons. Seven? Um, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. <laughs> Get hold the notebook on. out. Get the notebook right. out. Uh, and it's very in-depth. The I'm... first 16% is a 19-year-old Tennessee whiskey. You hear that? 19 years. That 19. is finished. In, yeah. And that is finished in cognac finished casks. Um, the next 11% is a 5-year-old Kentucky bourbon. 
finished in Madeira casks. Ooh. The next 14% is a 12-year Tennessee whiskey finished in sherry casks. Ooh. Ooh. The next 17% is an 11-year-old Tennessee whiskey finished in port casks. 3% of this is 17-year-old Tennessee juice finished in secondary American white oak. So I'm guessing it's the second use of that oak. That's what I would Sour, assume. Like a sour mash. Mm-hmm. Uh, they reuse the barrel. That's what my guess is. From a That's previous. five pieces right there. That's five pieces. So there's, there's two more. 20% oh. of it is a four-year-old Kentucky bourbon whiskey finished in Vino de Naranja casks is that a wine uh probably orange wine naranja uh, nar or narnaha sorry uh yes vino is wine so i'm assuming that is uh a wine uh that is 20 uh, percent of this and then the last 20 percent is a good old boring kentucky straight bourbon whiskey four-year-old uh so 20 percent. so to break that down You've got a 19-year-old, 12-year-old, 17-year-old, 11-year-old whiskeys combined with a couple of four- and five-year-old whiskeys in this all blended together. Uh, a mixture of Tennessee and Kentucky whiskey. Um, and I did the combination of all the mash bills. Did the math. Oh, and it comes my out, goodness. It comes out that this is 75% corn, 16.5% rye, and 8.5% barley. But again, this is all mixed and mashed all together with seven different types of finishes, whether that's just a normal uh, bourbon cask or cognac, Madeira, sherry, port, secondary American white oak, and vino de Nanarja. Uh So I'm sure this is going to be very, 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 very complex. Yes, I know the, of the notes, all the, the older whiskeys in this are all Tennessee whiskeys. Mm -hmm. and the younger ones are the Kentucky bourbons or whiskey. And I have a thought on that. And I have a thought on that as we get going here in the podcast. I've poured it. It's definitely got a unique nose. Have you I cracked... like the mash bill for a non-weeded bourbon. I like the mash bill. Yeah. So there were three different mash bills within that. And I'll dive into that after we give our rating and our review. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay. All right. Last right nostril. Now, what you got to do, remember that, that yeah. video I sent you, you got to swirl it around and then yeah. throw it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then throw it out because you don't want anything in your glass messing with it. And then get your nose right in there. Make sure you're smelling nothing but the bourbon. That is good stuff, man. I it really... It smells delicious. It smells like... I'm having a hard time putting a finger on it because there's so much coming at me with this. It's hard because you've got, you know, at least 15% almost of cognac, sherry, port. And so you just get those dark fruits out of this. I'm certainly getting dark fruit, but it's not necessarily cherry. It's definitely got I, I, the sherry forwardness to me. The sherry and the right. port I'm pulling out. I'm not getting as dry of a nose as I normally would with a port. Maybe like a, so. uh, that dark fruit smell you're getting instead of um, cherries, you're getting like a dark grape maybe. Maybe a plum too. You get a plum. Yeah, yeah. I get like a a plum and a brown sugar. I get a lot of brown sugar out of this. Brown sugar. There's some oak to it for sure. Twenty percent of it's just a normal regular bourbon cask. So, well, wow, that's a fifth of it. It is. But, it's got the fruit and the sweet smell, but it's not. It's not overly powering on any level. It's got. It's got a great, great nose. Yeah, the nose itself is uh, very delicious. It's got more of the desserty nose to me. What about, what do you think? I think if you're if you go in it looking for the sweetness, you 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 get a strong sense of sweetness like that brown sugar you were saying. I wouldn't say it's overly sweet. It's not I I wouldn't give it too much dessert. I think that one you get you would get much more of that heavier sweetness smell out of it, aroma. I'm getting a little coffee cake. Maybe that's that brown sugar coming through. Ooh, from Jewel Osco? Yeah, Jules from the Jewels. <laughs> Jules. You know, like, like a uh, I'm thinking like a crumble coffee cake, not like one of those Entenmann ones, but like a legit bready um, 
coffee cake. Like, like the jewels. Like what your grandma would make or your your parents would make. or you, Oh, we you, just you, went to the jewels. You just went to the jewels. <laughs> Fancy. You took a sip. Have I you... took a sip. I took a, the light palate cleansing mouth preparing sip and was boom, blown away just by that little sip. Went back in for another one after sniffing it some more. And this thing is still, as I'm talking, still changing in my mouth. Uh, this is a fantastic pour. First thing that jumps off my mind is sweet tarps again. I know I had that a couple of weeks ago. I think I had that with the rabbit hole when we did that. It's got like a sweet tarts candy taste right off the bat to me. There is some, there's some tingling right off the bat too. It's 112 proof. So there's some, there's some punch to this. Right up my alley, if I don't say so myself. (laughs) <laughs> Michael's a snob. Anything under 100 is just basically swill to everyone else. <laughs> I think that slice is rye. Um, it is not, I wouldn't say it's a low rye, but it's not a super high rye. But what's usually, it's usually corn, rye, and besides wheat, what's a fourth Barley. ingredient? Barley. Barley. That and that's where this is. So it's 75% corn, 16.5% rye, and then 8% barley. And that is if. These mash bills are listed with the traditional three. And I think they are because I'll talk to you about that in a second. But I'm getting sweet tarts, caramel, uh, some oakiness to it. A lot more oakiness than I thought there would be. There's not as much of the the wine to me. Oh, Um, it's not. It's not too mm dovetail-y. I don't have that wine... Even like the wine bitterness sometimes that you get from some of these or even the drying um, portion of this, this is very well balanced in my mind. Right. It's, it's, I, um, I do as we're, as, as, as you're saying it though, and and that's what happens sometimes is you listen Mm -hmm. to somebody else, try to pull notes and explain stuff and you kind of hear what they're saying. You kind of taste what they're saying. As I've, I haven't taken a sip here in a few minutes or, you know, 30 seconds, 90 seconds. Um, and I'm getting a little bit, I almost feel like whatever, it's not sher- sherry, but maybe that vino um, at the, at the, at the end of my finish here. Mm-hmm. And it's been, it's been a few seconds. I mean, it's, it's been at least 90 seconds and I'm still pulling notes out of this. This is fantastic. Or maybe it's the port, not the vino. I don't know what, vino, what color, you know, vino is and what it tastes like. I've had port, I've had Cabernet. This is where we do our in-depth in podcast research vino de naranja is orange wine produced in orange wine. spain so i said orange earlier didn't i you did no I you, did. you went from the the pulled the latin terms or something out of naha there yeah. and uh you must have took latin in high school didn't you uh naranja is orange in spanish so that's what i thought i read oh spanish not latin what you don't you know i don't speak spanish <laughs> baxter <laughs> Uh, But yes, it is an orange wine produced in uh, Spain with white wine macerated with orange peels. So there you go. It's a whiter wine uh, with the orange. I do, I literally wrote it down as you were talking earlier, orange on my sheet. So I got a little bit of orange on the backside uh, as it was starting to finish. It's a weird notes as I look at it, but sweet tarts, caramel, and orange, which you wouldn't think all go together. But this is... I think it's well-rounded, and I'm thinking it's a full-bodied finish, if you know what I'm saying. I feel the finish from the entire mouth rather than uh, more so on the backside and the tingle. You know what I'm saying? I get I get first first sip sweet. I get that, that citrus with the rye spice flavor into the fruit and then finish with a grapey wine aspect of it. That's my beginning to end. As I go back to nosing it, brown sugar on the left nostril, I get more of the wine on the right nostril. It's weird. Like, it's about church church wine? Ah, uh, no. It's like the Spanish wine. Also, not the blood of Christ, but no. I don't want the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very weird. It's like brown sugar on the left and wine on the right. So what do you think of this guy, then? Where, where are you putting this guy on the scale? Mm. This is... I'm pretty blown away. I don't think I've had something this complex since we had Barrel Vantage a couple months ago. Right. Again, there's a lot to Barrel Vantage in that as well, but I think this is very well done blending. Um, the blending of this is in, 
pretty pretty incredible considering how much went into it. I'd love to ask him how you choose these types of finishes to know that they're going to all come together to make what it makes. Like, how do you know 16% cognac, uh, 14% sherry? Like, how do you get to that? I know a lot of it's trial and error. Some and long was... drunk nights. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with an all-star on this. I think for 112, it doesn't drink like 112. It's, I know it's very taboo to use the word smooth in this community, but I would say that this is smooth, man. Like, I don't find any harshness out of this. I don't find any tannic portions of this or any tannins coming through to where I'm like, eh, that's right. bitter or I don't like that. Like, I find it from front to back from the beginning to the end, uh, very well-rounded. And I'm going to give it an all-star. I think that if I found a bottle of this, I don't think it's even for sale yet because it's uh, a reserve finish series and this is just um, probably coming out here soon, uh, I would assume, because this is sample use only on the bottle. Uh, I would buy a bottle of this if I found it on the shelf, depending on what the MSRP is. I don't know what that MSRP is. I didn't look into it. Um, but I wouldn't assume that it's going to be much more than probably $150, like most of these limited time offers range towards the top. Of, uh, but I'm going to give it an all-star. Michael, what do you think? Absolutely. Um, a good call there, Brandon. I uh, have to agree with you at a minimum. For me, this is a first ballot all-star. This guy was uh, on the fence, not on the fence for me, whether he was going to be bench or every day. He was, this is mm -hmm. an all-star for me. Um, the complexity of it, of all these different, flavors in it they're not overpowering the sherry is not overpowering it's not overpowering in the port it's not overpowering the fruit like some other bourbon or whiskeys i've had right that spice that you're talking about that's not overly spiced that 16.5 percent rye doesn't mm -hmm. kick you in the nuts it's a good <laughs> it's a good flavor rye um and as you Every time you go to this, you're getting other notes. Every time you're getting the orange, you're getting the, you're getting the grape, you're getting the sherry, you're getting the oak, ma mature oak. I mean, you've got a nine, you've got sixteen percent. You've got uh, almost a fifth of this is nineteen year old juice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then uh, there's that three percent that's seventeen. But yeah, absolutely for me, I agree with you, Brandon. This is an all star. I, I would not hesitate to buy this if I found it on the shelf. What's the most that you would pay for it for like normal seven fifty? I would probably pay anywhere between one hundred and one hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, that's what I think this would be reasonably priced at. Maybe even up to two hundred, depending on the batch size. Right? We don't know how many bottles of it were put out, etc. But I would buy this one hundred times over and over again, and that's why I'm giving it an all star. And here's the thing that's blowing my mind out of all of this. Because I'm going to tell you where I believe these juices are coming from. Yeah. The 19-year-old Tennessee, the 12-year-old, and the 11, and the 17 have a mash bill of 84, 8, and 8. That is a George Dickel mash bill. Interesting. The Kentucky mash bill is 70, 21, 9. Does that ring okay. a bell? No, I don't know my mash bills, except when you tell them to me. That is Green River, what we just tried a couple weeks ago, and you DFA'd it. <laughs> So that is why I didn't want to tell you ahead of time where I think this came from, because those two mash bills are coming from Dickel as well as and Bardstown from, and uh, Bardstown. But it's it's Green it's River, Green juice. River. It's still Green River. Juice. It's Green River juice. So uh, and even if you think back when we had uh, Brandon Lawson's Blue Note Major League Bourbon pick, that was Green River juice as well. Back in one of our earlier podcasts, which you can check out on any of our platforms. Just go head on over to YouTube, Instagram, or anywhere to check us out. But uh, I was very surprised by this. I thought that this was going to be a little too complex for me. There was a lot going on, but man. So what's missing from this? What would make this a Hall of Famer for you? What would make this a Hall of Famer for me? Maybe just a little more bite. Maybe a little higher proof. Higher proof? I was making fun of you a little earlier for that higher proof um, <laughs> comment. Actually, it's, it's pretty good where it's at. I don't know how you improve on this. Uh, I haven't given out a Hall of Famer yet. Maybe it's just because I'm hesitant to do that. I was right there. I was close. I'm, I mean, when I said this was a first ballot all-star for me, mm -hmm. um, what was missing from this maybe was in the beginning that sweetness goes right to that rye flavor. Mm -hmm. 
I think that rye flavor was a little flat. If I could have got some vanilla into a heavier oak to to with with that rye, this would have been a Hall of Famer for me. And, and, and it was not far from it. Ah, oh, man. This is good stuff. I've already poured another half pour. I, I poured my I poured the whole sample you gave me, and I'm uh, coming down. I'm savoring this last little <laughs> bit. Well, good news is I've got a little bit more in the sample bottle that they sent us. So again, thank you to those folks over at Blue Note. This is a fantastic... This reminds me a lot of Barrel Craft Spirits is putting out, right? Like they're doing all these different types of blends. I think this is kind of up the same kind of alley, uh, just with different types of juice. Again, uh, I'm assuming it's Dickel. It's got to be. And that's 50% Dickel and then 50% uh, what I would assume is Green River Distillate because it's coming in at 70219 for the other mash bills. So a uh, very good job by Blue Note for putting this out. You can go check them out. They're a really great follow on uh, Instagram, Blue Note Bourbon. Great juice. Yeah, great juice out of Memphis, Tennessee. Still have the regret of never buying their 17-year bottle. I oh. had my opportunity to. Uh, I had the I opportunity didn't. once, and I passed up for, for a Weller full proof at forty nine ninety nine. Can't beat, you know. Cost, yeah. that cost price price value, wise yeah. yeah well again thank you to blue note for sending this over to barrels and barrels of bourbon and baseball podcast as always thank you to you listeners and thank you for joining in we'd love to hear what you think of our podcast head on over to apple spotify amazon wherever you listen to us that's also google iHeartRadio, and stitcher please leave us a rating and a review just like we rated this bourbon and uh we gave it our um our honest review like thank you to blue note for sending this if we didn't like it we wouldn't have rated it the way that we did. So thank you to those folks over there. Find us on YouTube, Barrels and Ew. Barrels Pod. You okay? I spilled a little bit of oh, it. No. You, you got to start <laughs> licking up the table. Michael's not going to waste that. He just rated it an all-star, and he's only like done that to three others. Um, just a little bit. I'll be okay, but. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at the at handle Barrels and Barrels Pod, and on Twitter at Barrels and Barrels. Michael, any last words for our friends, families, viewers, listeners? Let's go.